I think we're live. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our latest session of Advocate Hub class. Thank you for joining us today. Um, about A little bit about me. I am Amina Tarek. I work as a support magician here at Influitive. I've been on the customer success team for about three months. Um, and I am excited to be joined today by our very special guest, Ryan Quackenbush. Uh, he is a corporate communication specialist at Apprenda which is a software company based out of New York, um, and they provide a platform as a service software to help companies create and manage their cloud-based applications. So I would like to um, present Ryan to you. Uh, he has been at Apprenda for over two and a half years in a marketing and PR role. He's Advocate Marketing Certified, and he's the administrator of the Apprenda Hub. So. Uh, over to you, Ryan. Oh, well, thank you first and foremost for the wonderfully warm welcome. Um, a little bit of more background about me. My background is a guy in the corporate communication specialist, which I realize is a kind of ambiguous term. I do corporate communications. Um, I communicate corporately. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, my background is in publishing, uh, creative writing. I've always been more of a right side of the brain kind of person, a less corporate person. So it's that's, it's ironic enough that I felt the need to say that. Um, now, Apprenda, in a nutshell, we cloud enable existing and future applications for the global 2000. Uh, what does that have to do with advocate marketing? Well, it's a space that prior to hearing about Influitive, we had never broken into before. Uh, I think to a, a lesser degree, we were aware of the idea of advocate marketing, but uh, our journey towards this branch was pretty sudden. Um, I was at my desk one day uh, just doing my normal day-to-day -day operations, and my VP of marketing, Jesse Kleiser, happened to walk by me, and he was having a conversation with another one of my coworkers about this new platform they'd heard about. Now, he had heard about it solely from the perspective of customer and partner uh, advocacy. My focus was more, or uh, my interests rather, were more along the line of uh, internal communications and what, uh, how best to keep a company culture. Uh, Apprenda is venture-backed. We just received a Series D funding of $24 million. And anybody who has worked at a startup realizes that culture plays a big part of what you do every day. But the faster you grow, the larger you grow, the more difficult it becomes to hold on to uh, any kind of unique company culture. So part of what I wanted to do was find a platform or a way just to foster that, to hold on to that, and really to help people feel involved in that. Um, now, I first heard about advocate marketing, like I said, through my VP. He uh, talked about the platform's um, capabilities, the external uh, capabilities, but I saw uh, just from, or I heard rather, just from the uh, brief descriptions of what he's talking about, um, that he thought it had immense potential uh, internally as well. So I advocated for myself to become the administrator of the platform um, and was brought on to a call with uh, our onboarding specialist, Selena, who is awesome. And if you ever get a chance to work with her, consider yourself very lucky. And after just a, a, a brief phone call and a little bit of arguing on my own behalf, uh, Jesse pretty much gave me the keys to the car. Now. That uh, involved a lot of, uh, well, uh, uh, pressure, so to speak, right? You don't, when you're given the keys to the car, you don't want to crash it on your first day having your license. That might make mom and dad think twice about ever letting you do that again. So what's the best thing that you can do? Well, you can learn from the people that are there to teach. You know, this is the everyone at Influitive. This is your onboarding specialist. This is your advocacy coaches. Uh, Influitive does an incredible job of giving you all the tools to make you successful, or at least to teach you how to make yourself successful. 
and will go above and beyond to assist you in doing so. Now, I, right from the get-go, jumped on every webinar that they had, which uh, are very uh, regular. I watched all their pre-recorded webinars, which this one will become eventually. <laughs> um, I read all the release notes, uh, past release notes, current release notes of uh, products, which come at you about every two weeks, which is that, that's mind-boggling to me that you guys get releases out that fast. Um, I had regular calls with my advocacy, uh, advocacy coaches, which uh, after Selena became Eli and now Stephanie. Um, and again, I stole heavily from the VIP Hub. Uh, I know prior to this webinar there was a challenge in the VIP Hub um, directing people to leave questions to ask during the webinar, which we'll get to later on. But uh, I noticed uh, a lot of them uh, in there I, I had already seen um, in the VIP Hub. I feel like I know you guys. That's really what I'm saying. I feel like we have a connection. The next time we all get together, we're going to going to have some cheese and crackers and make, and make a bay of it. Um, and to that end, what did I want to do with this Advocacy Hub after gaining a little bit of knowledge, after seeing what you could do? Um, so basically, uh, the idea behind our uh, journey to advocate marketing and Influitive is that we wanted to use this, this uh, Influitive Hub to increase departmental transparency. Now again, I go back to the idea of salvaging and fostering company culture, especially that of a startup culture. So we wanted a platform to centralize all of our communications, um, really make uh, employees feel like they are connected and uh, that they know what's going on and how best to do that, whether they are uh, across the country in Arizona or right here at HQ in Troy, New York. It's a beautiful town if you're ever looking to relocate. Well, that's where we really wanted to go with the um, advocacy hub. Is that we wanted to break down all of our department walls, centralized communications, remote and remote employees, focus on transparency, yada yada yada. And of course, not only did we want to do that, but my personal goal was that I wanted to make it as fun as possible. I'm, I'm a pretty animated person, so. I wanted it to be very interactive. I noticed that you were able to integrate a lot with YouTube videos, with, with GIFs, with fun pictures, really personalize all the information and all the language within the platform itself to make people that much more apt to participate. So that's pretty much what I did. And before I launched it to the entire company, um, I realized that nothing was going to be perfect if I just presented it as is. So I hand-selected a group of about 10 different employees. A prime is right around 100 employees. So I picked about 10 people that I have uh, regular conversations with, and I made sure that they, there were at least one or two representatives from every department in the company, and onboarded them early as advocates in order to help me iron out any kind of uh, kinks in the program, brainstorms, challenges that I created that might not work because I did it wrong. Um, and yeah, after that, well, then we launched. So this whole bringing on uh, a select group of employees early on, this was relatively long. It was about a month, a month and a half. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be that long, but I'm very, like I said, I was very aware of getting the keys to the new car. I didn't want the new car to meet the, the new bushes or the new brick wall. So I wanted to really polish it up, make it nice, make it very presentable, and have a ton to do uh, once you got into it. Now that doesn't necessarily isolate itself to, you know, hey, there's 10 challenges here, there's 10 challenges there. I really wanted this to be an immersive atmosphere. So I wanted this, this employee facing hub to incorporate all aspects of onboarding, aspects of company history as well as where we are right now and what we're doing. Now that's the social media. And I'm sure um, most of the people here today are familiar with the capabilities of the platform itself. Um, but after I brought on a small localized group of uh, employees, 
I decided then I needed to get executive buy-in. Now this is all prior to me launching into the entire company. So what I the the um, the select group of employees had been using this uh, the Inclusive Hub in front of everyone else in the company. So people were relatively familiar, or at least they had an idea that something was going on, that that marketing was up to something sinister or you know <laughs> relatively uh, interesting. So. There was already internal advocacy going on. People would walk up and be like, hey, what are you working on? What's that thing you're doing? Or, or you know, what's going on? So the executives, I wanted to get their buy-in. Um, I realized that that was extremely important to getting the entire company on board. Um, obviously, if the higher-ups are telling you that you should do something or, or <laughs> advocating for the lack of a better word, on your behalf, then you're probably going to be that much more interested in participating. Uh, so I onboarded um, after giving them a presentation, um, after just showing them, giving them a walkthrough of what the platform was capable of, what it could do. Uh, I brought them on as advocates in order to give them a chance to poke around inside the hub itself, see what it was capable of, see what I had done, maybe feed me some ideas. All along this this route, the select group of employees were really pointing me in different directions, um, especially different departmental directions of which I might not have any prior knowledge. And this is uh, the same thing that I wanted to do with executives that I brought on. So um, I brought them on board. And this is me wearing my awesome black velvet jacket uh, that my fiance did not like and has since suspiciously gone missing from my closet, which reminds me I need to ask about that. So um, I brought this is an idea of what the uh, Apprenda Passport, as it's come to be known, uh, looks like. Now, as you can see here, I have the getting started. Now, I have created an event that is full of just starter challenges, information about the hub, what it's going to do, what our intentions are for it, what you can expect to see. Uh, there's disclaimers in there about, oh, you have to you know, sign up your, your social media platforms to it in order to post Twitter challenges. But you know, you know, uh, there's background information on things that they're going to need, questions they're going to have that I don't want them to have to walk around the office to find me to ask. They can just go in there. And then there's also next to that you'll see the onboarding experience, which is very uh, creatively titled if I don't mind saying so myself. That, um, is just full of background information. Now, the company Apprenda has been around since about 2005, 2006, in very embryonic stage, and we've gone through four different rounds of VC funding. Well, a lot of new employees and current employees, for that matter, might not have any idea what those stages of funding look like, who our board members are, what are the functions of different departments, what are the backgrounds of our founders. Uh, <laughs> What are the degrees of our founders? How do they all meet? How did the company come about? This, this sort of thing. So that um, is a place to really focus all of that information. So these are two ways just for employees that I've sort of created areas in the hub to you know, help facilitate uh, <laughs> a, a several different areas. Now, um, the passport also, I would like to point out, was named by one of the first advocates to be onboarded. Uh, one of our employees, we, we realized we needed to come up with unique branding and unique, uh, um, a unique name for it. We couldn't just call it the, the Apprenda Hub. So passport is obviously a, a play on platform as a service. And I thought that since it was named by them, that would be a pretty uh, exciting thing. To, so that, that basically what I'm trying to say is that I'm illustrating the idea that through employee input and through employee suggestions, the, the platform is allowing itself to be continually changed and continually uh, evolving. So uh, then we brought on like uh, okay back to the executives. I realize I'm rambling somewhat. And I apologize for that. Uh, maybe I had too much coffee this afternoon. So. I brought the executives on. I allowed them to become uh, advocates. Allowed them to poke around in here, participate in the point raffles, and, and these sorts of fun things. Um, and then 
I, after about a week, this was much shorter. After about a week, I gave a company-wide luncheon presentation, which if you've never done before, is terrifying. So uh, on a luncheon presentation, I sat in front of a room full of 70 employees with 30 remote employees on the telephone and gave them a slightly faster, more uh, adrenaline-filled discussion similar to what I'm giving to you guys. And again, um, let them know that following this, this, this presentation, they were going to be receiving emails to be invited in as advocates within the platform um, that was called the Appenda Passport. And to jump in, try to break it, have as much uh, input as they wanted, and just really, again, get a, get a sense of what we're going to be doing with this. Now, the one thing that really jumped out at me wasn't necessarily the, the feedback I got on the challenges or the feedback that I got on the potential rewards and prizes in the, uh, the passport. It was really the, the individual sales representatives and even developers coming up to me after my luncheon presentation and saying things like, so you really think it's possible to get a customer or a partner and, and incentivize them to jump on a sales call and act as a referral or to give us uh, extra customer referrals or help participate in case studies or so on and so forth. And that to them was a no-brainer. It was just like, yeah, man, that's, that sounds like an awesome idea. I can't wait to see what this is capable of. Now, the main focus of the Apprentice Passport right now is only internal for the next few weeks. The goal has always been to launch the employees first, and then towards the end of Q3, Q4 to launch to select groups of partners and customers. Um, and I mean that's really where this, this, uh, this Influitive Hub demonstrates a ton of value is the ability to again, get, get your own partners and customers to advocate for you on your behalf because really if someone has an intimate knowledge of your product firsthand, that is the most informative and enthusiastic voice you can want speaking for you on your behalf, right? So we're going to leave my, uh, my, my awesome velvet jacket now, and we're going to talk a little bit about post-launch. The numbers that were generated initially when you go from, say, 10 employees to about 100 employees were staggering. Uh, the, the feedback was, was somewhat overwhelming. The activity was great. The social interactions were great. The community page blew up. Every aspect of this hub that people could dive into was exploding with activity. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That's, it was, it, it, and it is a lot of fun. I shouldn't say it was. I'm talking to past tense. I don't mean to do that. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it's huge, I have huge participation numbers. I mean, this is really what you want to see from your hub rate. You want to see 100% uh, advocacy engagement, which you, you probably won't. 100% is, is, would be incredible. Um, right now, a friend of employees, I have about 75% uh, regularly engaging, regularly participating, regularly giving feedback. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Obviously, you're shooting for 100% in perfection. But all in all, um, that's, those aren't bad numbers. Now, what kind of results did I, did I go for? Well, when I launched the hub to the select group of employees, I realized that in order to get executive buy-in, I would have to demonstrate some sort of immediate value for the hub. I couldn't just create and show them and, them, you know, hell, well, you know, we can get customers on here and we can have them, you know, help us create case studies. In order to launch to employees, I needed to demonstrate some sort of well, I mean, like immediate results. So I created a challenge um, that was incentivizing employees to go on and create a glass door review of what they really feel it's like working at Ascenda. Everybody, we, now I, you just walk around and talk to you. We all enjoy what we do. We all love our company. We love coming to work. We love the people that we work with. But the outside world doesn't know that beyond the day-to-day -day conversations we might have with Joe Smith, the butcher, down the road while we're doing our grocery shopping. Not everybody really knows that. So Glassdoor was a perfect opportunity for us to do that. 
Now, what kind of immediate results could that demonstrate? Well, just in um, launching to a select small group of employees, all of them created uh, Glassdoor reviews of the company. Now, between the month and a half to uh, of just onboarding a hand selected group of employees to the luncheon presentation company wide and me sweating up there, uh, we had hired probably I want to say 10 to 12 new employees. We, we've gone through a, a, a massive hiring spree recently. So to almost a man, I think of those, I think it's something like 85 to 90 percent, every one of them in their interviews, in their job interviews, cited the Glassdoor reviews as being pivotal to their decision to come on to a friend up. Now, that sort of demonstration is great. Okay, well, so these new employees saw some glass store reviews. Well, you know, how many people can see that? When Forbes picks it up and the Albany Business Review pick it up and have discussions with you or, or, or print this and say, hey, a friend of was just named to the top three enterprise cloud computing companies to work for in 2015. Uh, and this information is based directly on uh, information posted to Glassdoor, that says a lot. Now, one thing uh, worth noting about this, this Glassdoor article in Forbes is that, one, it reached 10,000 people, and two, in order to be even considered for this article, you had to have at least 15 Glassdoor reviews. Uh, at the time of my luncheon, we had 15. I'm not really sure what we have now. I think it's somewhere in the 30s or 40s because that challenge still exists in the passport. And to this day, people still go on. Not every day. But you, we, we relatively heavily incentivize that end point to go on and do this. Um, and it's really nice when you can look at that and say, oh, everybody here has faith in your CEO. And everybody but two people uh, would recommend us to a friend. Now, you know, it, it's, it's, that kind of reminds me of like, you know, four out of five dentists agree that chewing big red will give you good breath. Well, 98% of dentists would agree. Oh, but I don't really know where I was going with that analogy. Anyway, I digress and move on. <laughs> so, success other than our Forbes article. Other than the just being able to point out and look at the numbers associated with show, with uh, social shares, I think um, there are a number of intangible benefits. I mean, just just general information, feeling a part of it. We uh, at a printer we have a, a number of remote employees, um, and I'm going to highlight one in particular. Uh, one of um, the members of our client services teams is embedded right now uh, at one of our customers in New York City. Now he lived in Troy and moved to New York City just to be implemented into our uh, customer in order to help them through the launching and facilitation of our software platform at the organization. And I, he's one of the most active advocates in the Apprentice Passport by far. Uh, he was the Q2 points leader, I mean, above everybody else. And once we launched the entire company, he still won Q3 uh, total points leader, but the, the scope between him and the next person had uh, decreased dramatically, and he's slightly self-conscious about that. Now, the reason I bring him up is because I wanted to highlight the importance that for employee advocates, the, uh, the hub can play. Because I, I wish I had screenshot the uh, email right now, and I'm going to paraphrase it to you. But he sent me a message one day um, after watching some of the uh, videos that I, I put into the passport and said that uh, how important this, this was to him, one, to feel like he was still involved, and two, to know what's going on at HQ at all times. Um, and I, it, was, it was a warmly written message, but it really it, it made me very proud to do what I do and excited to uh, keep on doing it. Now, you can say, you know, great, so you have some remote employees that, that feel good about using it. But, you know, I don't think that should be anything to be belittled because, again, we're, we're talking about holding on to 
facilitating and growing your company culture. And I don't think um, that can be stressed heavily enough, the importance of, especially for a, uh, a startup like ourselves. Now, as I said earlier, we are planning on – this is this is step one of our rollout of what we want to do. Uh, the idea is that we want to roll it out to include partners and customers as well. Now, because we're lucky enough to have – one of our employees embedded in the customer at the moment, uh, embedded with a customer, sorry, embedded with a customer at the moment. That's weird. Um, we're, the plan uh, is to launch a customer slash partner facing hub um, to a select group within this customer to do the same thing that we did here. So uh, we're going to hand select 15 or 20, I think that's the size of the community works with, and we're going to launch a hub to them. Um, and you know the idea being that uh, we want to again do the same thing that we already did, and use the lessons and all of the uh, successes that we learned just from launching to the employees, in order to ensure that once we grant access to partners and customers, they feel just as involved, just as informed, and they have fun doing it. Because the number one thing you have to remember is you know this. These aren't robots that you're dealing with. These are people. And I don't think, I think one of the biggest mistakes you can make is not be willing to inject at least a little bit of your own personality into the hub uh, to make it more fun. I think fun should be the number one goal. Well, maybe not the number one. One of the biggest goals uh, of any successful ag advocacy program. I think just speaking from my own experience, that goes above and beyond, uh, especially when you launch a challenge or you, or, or you do anything, and laughter and enjoyment is the result of it. So, um, and I think that's also uh, another point worth making is that I do a lot of, uh, when I do my challenge creations, I do a lot of video work. I have a very low budget uh, video studio that I created in an unused room in the office. Again, putting the personal touches on there, making yourself recognizable. I've been called the the, the face of a friend uh, or the uh, the voice of a friend of HQ because of the work that I do in the hub. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, that, in a nutshell, a very limited nutshell, is what we've done so far with the uh, a friend of passport. That's great. That was a lot of great insight. I actually so much trivia in there that I wasn't aware of. It's good to hear the whole story and which is why I let you ramble a bit, Ryan. <laughs> I apologize to everyone else for that, but it's her fault. She let me ramble. <laughs> it is my fault. Well it, it, well, it was so interesting to know that the name of the hub actually came from an advocate. I did not know that. And I think that speaks a lot to how you know advocacy plays a big role in the way a company shapes itself. And well, it's, I, actually, it's, uh, I, I do think that's important. Um, one to have all that company input, but it's it's, it's also the one the one really interesting thing was when I hand selected the group of employees within the company. Uh, everybody walking up and saying, "What are you doing? What are they working on? What's this going on?" And then coming up to me and asking if they could be onboarded early. So I picked ten employees originally to do this, but then five or six became extremely vocal about wanting to to know and get involved. That um, actually, my, my number increased almost, I, I think right around 17. I think seven people asked to be onboarded after they saw these 10 people working on it before the entire company, before the executive. Oh, wow. So that was like, yeah, that was, that was yeah, that's advocacy marketing happening in yeah. real time right in front of me. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty exciting. And it, it's, it is a big deal to maintain that company culture as you're growing as much as you are. It, it's great that you're keeping the remote employees involved in what's going on in HQ. It is a big part of the company culture here at Influtive as well. And that's why like the employee programs that we see going on, it's great to see the employees engaging with everybody else. And it's not the usual corporate mindset that we've become familiar with over the years. So that's great to hear. Agreed. Yeah. So I, I, I think, think I think I, I oh. Would you agree with me in this when I say when I say that advocate marketing, is, to a certain extent, is a maybe not a departure from, but a, a little bit of moving away from the traditional corporate idea of what marketing is? 
I'd say so. You know what I mean? Like, it's sort of turning on its head a little bit. Um, and having your advocates speak for you, it's, it's a different approach to how marketing has been seen. I realize that was a very sweeping general statement, and I, and I didn't mean to condemn traditional marketing in any way. But. Not at all, not at all. Like, we wouldn't be able to – there are elements of traditional marketing involved in advocate marketing as well. It's, it's so layered in that way. You bring in all the content uh, and the social media marketing, and it's same like even advertising you can weave into advocate marketing. But the idea of advocate marketing itself is, I think, an evolution of where we were before that. But mm -hmm. I think we can dive into some of these questions that we've gotten from um, some of our lo lovely participants. Um, and the first question that we saw was from Christine, who was a hub administrator at Cvent, uh, and she asked, "What has been your most effective employee challenge, and why?" Um, well, effective. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use two examples of that. One would be the, obviously the glass door challenge, just based on the fact that we got into Forbes with it, um, okay. and it got the executives on board when they saw, "Oh, wow!" Like this directly affected the rate at which we can hire good talent. Um, mm -hmm. From, a, from a, a fun hub interactive perspective, I would think there's, there's something you can do called monthly challenge or monthly raffles, right? Or you can do, mm -hmm. you can do them however often you want, but I do them monthly, which is a, a, you get all of your advocates to sacrifice, let's say 200 points. And then at the end of the month, whoever gets chosen uh, takes home the pot. Now, that's that's okay, great. So you know, the, the gambling is the most uh, the most fun that people have. But the reason I think um, that it's so popular is because I go above and beyond and create one and a half to two minute videos to announce the winner of the hub. Um, and I usually try to incorporate a new employee to help me um, at the company decide who the, the winner is, usually by picking a name out of a hat or shooting the ball into a cup or, or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, one, that, that's visibility. Two, it's helping the people get to know one another. Three, it's quick. Um, but that's just, that's just a lot of fun to do. And I got the idea uh, from Truman because oh. he and Dylan uh, create, create gifts uh, and I didn't know how to create a gift or a gift, but I did know how to create a video. So I, I stole the idea for him, but morphed it into my own somewhat. And, yeah. <laughs> Those gifts are very popular, by the way. Uh, they are, gifts. and they're very and well done. I think my, my are favorite, even more hilarious. Yeah, my, I think my favorite one was. Uh, oh God, what, what was that last one he just did? He kept, he kept walking into a room. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I, I, I butchered it room, and I apologize. But the last <laughs> we'll one was my it. favorite. We'll post it in the community. Okay. I'll, I'll look oh. for it. Um, well, Nilesh from Ariaka Networks asked, what would be your top three tips for launching the hub to employees? I know that's an important question a lot of people ask because they are about to launch a few programs of their own. So what would be your top three tips? Uh, I just want to recognize Nilesh. I see him in the VIP hub all the time. He and I were going head-to-head yeah. -head there. Um, <laughs> let's see. What are my top three tips for launching the hub to employees? One, get feedback uh, and use it. Mm -hmm. Two would be uh, don't be afraid to fail because you're going to take missteps. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, but roll with the punches and, and take it as you go and learn from it. That, that, that is probably actually I think that should be number one. Uh, and two, since you're going to be dealing with employees and people you know, make it fun, man. Make it interactive, make it interesting, and make sure that there's a balance of asking, uh, fun challenges, and uh, and communication. It's that those are key. And being prompt. Yeah. Yeah. Balance is definitely key, and so is I, I like that you say admins that they shouldn't be afraid to fail. It's, it's good to, but I also like your approach of testing it out with a small group of employees first, just to like roll out the kinks if you're, it is your first launching hub. But definitely not being afraid to fail is good advice. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just a ton of information to take on all at once. So yeah. you're going to feel slightly overwhelmed. You're going to feel kind of anxious. But at the same time, if you, if you do some reading and you do a, a little bit of webinar attending and you talk to your advocacy coaches, you catch on so fast. And yeah. you, you really learn the ropes, and it, it becomes second nature to a certain degree. And it's fun. I mean, this is interesting. You're, you, you're being creative and being asked to be creative every day. Yeah. Actually, I have a question here from uh, uh, the chat coming in from Michelle. She asks, how do you think that launching an internal advocacy program first will affect participation overall once it's launched to customers and partners? So do you think that this trial run, I guess you could see it as a trial run, but it really isn't. It's uh, testing it out with your employees first. Does it give you any lessons that you can take to your launch with customers and partners that can make those more effective? Oh, absolutely, of course. It's, it's like, I'll go back to the, to the driving, you know, driving the car. I think it would be like having your learner's permit or if, I don't, I don't know what the, the Canadian uh, equivalent is, but it's like having your, your learner's permit to drive and then going out and doing lessons with your parents before you get into a car mm -hmm. with the guy who's going to give you your full-time license, right? Yeah. So it gives you the opportunity to, um, if you're launching to employees first, it gives you the opportunity to, to try things out and to, to be a little bit unconventional. And if, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, yeah. okay, so you've got to switch it up a little bit. Um, I, now, I don't think it's going to affect uh, in, a, in any adverse way uh, in one way or the other when I, if it, once we launch to partners and customers. I think, if anything, it's going to enhance the overall experience because mm -hmm. one, it's going to, you, you've, already, you've already become familiar with it. You, you already understand the idea of it. And you know what? Your, your company is already behind you. So... Yeah. If you have customers who are dealing with your company every day, that means they're dealing with the employees at your, co at your company who are already in the hub itself. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if there's, if there's a chance, and there will be a chance, your customers are probably going to be talking to your employees about the hub. And, hey, did you see this? Or what about this? Or can you do this? That sort of thing. So, I mean, there's going to be yeah. advocacy about advocacy happening yeah. in a weird kind of yeah. Uh, right cross dimensional up. flux. The flux capacity is going to be <laughs> at play here. And, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. Um, Jessica from Smart Tech asks How do you loop in your HR folks to make sure that the employee program is a success? Um, it's not often that I have to loop in my, my, uh, anyone in HR. Uh, mm -hmm. But if I have a question or I have a concern, uh, about whether or not I'm violating an HR policy or I don't necessarily, well, I, I, I guess the, the, the crux of the question is that I don't think um, HR folks have to say one way or the other whether the program is a success. I think just looking at the amount of employee activity, uh, the amount of uh, interactions and feedback, I think that's going to tell you whether or not your program program is a success, and I think uh, yeah. any kind of potential HR violations, if you think there might be, you should probably change the approach. Uh, mm -hmm. The last, last thing you want to do is isolate the very people that you want to be participating. I think the other possibility here too is, uh, and it's what happens here in Influtive, is the HR team gives us ideas on new challenges that we can create as well, so Absolutely. especially if they're recruiting. Right, so if there are if they are recruiting like startups are these days, um, they just ask the hub admin, create a couple of challenges for me to get some referrals from new employees, um, and we've seen a lot of success with that. That's actually a really good point too. Uh, the one thing I should acknowledge that the uh, the onboarding uh, experience that I highlighted mm -hmm. earlier that was the suggestion um, of our director of recruiting. Wow. There you go. And it's actually a great suggestion. I like that idea of having that onboarding experience for new advocates in the hub. Well, he, uh, he said that we should, uh, we should have onboarding challenges, and I, I isolated every onboarding challenge to be within that experience itself. Kind of a <laughs> subset. Cool. cool. Very good idea. Um, Michael from BlackBot, I think you sort of covered a bit of this. How do you create so many great videos? Do you use a specific video editing tool? 
you did mention it was very low budget, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, what, it's what very good. Yeah. Um, well, I use a DSLR camera. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually just upgraded the uh, DSLR camera not too long ago, so it's it's much nicer than the one we were using. My original DSLR that I created some of the earlier videos uh, used AA batteries, so that was uh, that was a pleasure to work with. <laughs> That's um, yeah, and uh, if you are really interested in putting together a very low video budget studio, um, I suggest you guys go to Wikia.com, check out their hot yeah. tutorials, and look at their mm -hmm. down and dirty lighting video. Uh, that's I robbed that verbatim. Um, yeah. I made sure that my uh, background was uh, as close to a trend of blue as I could uh, as I could get. And I just want to give a shout out to Mike at Blackbaud. Just hey buddy, how you doing? Um, <laughs> you know I have have met a few times and we get along. So as far as the specific video editing tool, uh, I use a program called Camtasia, which is um, by a company called TechSmith. It's mm -hmm. very, very simple for the less technically savvy people out there like myself to put mm -hmm. that in perspective. Everybody, I have a record player on my desk at work. I'm, I'm in the wrong decade, wow. but I'm really trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Wow. Cool. That's true. So we have like three minutes left here, so we're going to just power through the last couple of questions. Um, so Josh from Clarison asked, did you start with just a single department or roll out company-wide from day one? I think we sort of covered that a bit. Um, and I just want to reiterate, I think that's a good, fantastic idea of um, selecting a small group of people and then getting that executive buy-in. Like without, without having those initial group to test and show results with, it's really hard to get that buy-in from the beginning. Yeah, no, I, I agree yeah. with that. And it, it's also important to, I think, uh, the, just to reiterate the single department uh, part of this question. Mm -hmm. I made sure that when I hand-selected these 10 to 15 employees, they were representative of every department, even if that was just one. Um, mm -hmm. making sure that everybody had at least a little bit of input, a little bit of say, and a little bit of feedback into the overall direction of the program. Uh, because cool. you're, yeah, well, you're representing the company, and in order to do that, you need a little bit from everybody. Yeah, do you think that helped with the diversity of feedback that you got in? Oh, absolutely. I, there's, uh, I don't, I'm not directly involved in uh, engineering, for example, so I don't know what their yeah. concerns are. I don't know what what necessarily the challenges would be. I don't really know what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, mm -hmm. And that's another thing. Uh, one of the other employee suggestions, I ask people to suggest challenges. Um, uh, that's an ongoing thing. Just, you know, hey, go on. What kind of challenges do you want to see? What would you like to do? And one of the employees said that we should do uh, a day in the life write-up of somebody. Well, I took that a step further because I, I create video masterpieces in my $20 studio, and uh, that's a joke. And I, I, what I do now is I shadow people all day long from a different department and find out exactly what, say, Morgan from product does. Uh, what's the day in the life of Morgan look like, or what's the day in the life of Dan look like? Um, yeah. And then I put these up just as quick 10-point challenges. Hey, watch this five-minute video, get an idea of what this person does, because we all know that we contribute every day. You work yeah. in a startup, you you got to work hard, and 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 you're wearing you're wearing a lot of different hats. But what we don't know necessarily is how each of us collectively contribute. So mm -hmm. uh, this was this was one way to shed some light on that. Cool. Um, next question: What from Lauren XCM Solutions? What was one approach you took to engage advocates when you first started the program? So. And how did you get new advocates? I guess your employees are still around, and so they'd be invited to the hub. But mm -hmm. well, has your approach or has your strategy to engage with your employees changed? Um, I think it's fluid, right? So mm -hmm. it, uh, it's got to change, but the overall goal doesn't necessarily change. Maybe your approach mm -hmm. does, but um, I guess it becomes a little more all-encompassing. I mean, once you once you start engaging different departments, you start engaging a lot more people. I guess maybe the microscope gets a little bit bigger. But mm -hmm. the uh, engaging the advocates, um, no, I don't think the, my approach has has differed from from that which 
is when I started, which was direct go to feedback, uh, asking for feedback, um, uh, <laughs> taking every and all uh, piece of input that or uh, the question input that they might have. Um, and as far as uh, the gaining new advocates, well, that we're we're hiring fast. So so as yeah. they come in, now it's just become uh, the Apprenta Hub is is now uh, part of the onboarding process. That's cool. That's cool. That's which is also... which is going to be really that's really going to be beneficial for employee engagement because I mean if you have existing employees, they might look at this new tool and say, okay, well this is fun, and you know it's because it hasn't been a part of their day to day since the beginning. They might not. Remember it every day, um, but if if an employee is onboarded and from day one they're presented with it, then I think yep. that will uh, you know. It definitely helps. It definitely yeah. helps. Uh, and the last two questions that we have here, one's from Emily, and she asks, "How do you keep employees engaged after the initial buzz and excitement wears off? Has the excitement actually worn off?" Um, I mean. Somewhat. I, you, get, you get some people who bounce in once every two months, and they'll, okay. they'll jump in and they'll do like 20 or 10 or 20 things, and then, they'll, then you won't see them again for a while. Yeah. Um, as far as keeping them engaged. But then you get engaged, news in Forbes, right? You get, you get on the first exactly. cover of Forbes there, and then they'll, they'll come right back. I think, honestly, though, yeah, absolutely. And, and a, a good example would be like, okay, so then I put together this six or seven minute day in the life video. And mm -hmm. I publish these. Usually, I do these every few weeks. I try to do them, you know, every three weeks, but it's, it's probably closer to once a month because they're, they're somewhat time-consuming. But once you do, once you do that, and then I'll send out a notification to the entire company. Hey, there's a new challenge. Let's go check it out. Yeah. Um, you're every time you, you can't do it all the time because then people just get burned out by it and they don't check them anymore. But if you send out a notification, uh, fairly irregularly. People notice that, they'll click on it, and then next thing you know, you know, people are poking around all through there. And then they start yeah. finding things and they start, you know, getting involved and they start having more comments and more feedback. So there are somewhat ebbs and flows, but the buzz and excitement to a large degree hasn't worn off um, because it's interactive and it's and it's fun. Mm hmm Cool. Yeah. I, I like to think. I like to think. I, I think it works, and I think um, another a trick would be to sort of send a notification of new featured rewards. Sometimes that can get people excited. Oh, um, yeah, because, I like, touch, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cycling through your rewards and like freshening up that ca catalog there too helps. Um, and the last question that we'll quickly tackle here is from Alyssa Adele, um, and she asks a rather big question, but let's try to tackle it in a minute. Um, so what are your biggest challenges in terms of engagement? What were some tactics that worked for you and some that failed horribly? Oh, boy. Well, first of all, I just want to say and uh, give Alyssa a tip of my hat because she keeps passing me in the VIP. Uh, <laughs> a leaderboard? Yes. Yeah, she keeps knocking me back down, and it hurts every time, <laughs> Alyssa. I want you to know that. <laughs> um, now, as far as biggest challenges in terms of engagement, I think uh, it, it, it's, it's getting people to become interested in something that they didn't have any prior knowledge of or any interest in before, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to sell them on the potential and sell them on, you know, uh, <laughs> The viability of it, and it's not just one more tool that's going to be added to the company foray. It's like, no, this is this is a lot of potential. This is could be uh, extremely impactful and mm -hmm. uh, enjoyable. So that's probably the biggest challenge is just getting people to dive in. Um, I wouldn't say it's uh, an overly like an, uh, you can't. It's not insurmountable. Of course, you can do it. Um, but putting it in, in terms and in the language that makes them curious, I guess, is, is, is really that, – that's probably the biggest challenge, right? Hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't want to present – if you present somebody with stereo instructions, they're probably not going to look at it. They're probably not going to mm -hmm. read through it. But if mm -hmm. you um, 
just a, I don't know, uh, if, you, if you give them an Onion article or something off BuzzFeed, yeah, they're probably going to be a little more apt to click through that, I would think. Yeah, um, and that's why it's important to make them fun and, like, have that balance, right, between yeah, the fun absolutely. and the ask. Mm-hmm. These are these are people. They're not uh, they're not robots. And you aren't either. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Cool. So I think that was all our questions, and we are right on time as well. Ryan, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. That was a very very interesting call. It's very good to hear our successful launches from our customers and what you know their ups and downs, but most of their ups. <laughs> We we certainly hope so. That's that's always yeah. the end goal. No, yeah. this is uh, this was very enjoyable and and again, if anybody has uh, any questions or comments, um, they can feel free to reach out to me directly. That's uh, rquackenbush at affronted dot com. I'm more than willing to uh, talk to anybody about about the hub, and I would love to to brainstorm together. So. Awesome. Thank you. So for everybody who is on the call, thank you so much for joining us. Um, a recording of this will be available on YouTube. I can send you all the link after uh, when it's ready in a couple of days. Um, and yeah, thank you again for joining us. Let us know if you have any questions and see you at the next Advocate Hub class. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>